let us consider one more important chapter that we have which is mainly dealing with the energy principle as such but before we could actually start with the energy principle problems we will have to first of all recall the newton's laws and out of that the most important law that is the second law of motion which says that force is directly proportional to rate of change of momentum now in the impact problems we have considered what is the momentum momentum is nothing but the product m into v so we can write the equation as force is proportional to d by dt of m into v now mass is not the entity which is going to change with time unless the problem is using such a entity so mass is generally constant and so force will be written as d by dt of mv which is nothing but m into dv by dt and dv by dt is the term which we are specifying as the acceleration that is the rate of change of velocity now once we consider rate of change of velocity that is acceleration and if the body is acted upon by several forces if the body is acted upon by several forces then the acceleration of the particle will be in the direction of the resultant force and resultant force is the concept that we have studied in statics when there are several forces acting on a particular body then we can take the summation of their x components as well as summation of their y components and we can find out the net resultant force as well as the direction of that particular force now the acceleration of the body is going to be in the direction of the applied force that is the resultant force and so we can write one important principle that is summation of all the forces acting on the body is nothing but mass into acceleration now here again we are not learning anything that is very new as such but the same thing can be splitted further because now we can think of the summation of the forces in the x direction will be equal to mass into acceleration in the x direction that is horizontal direction and similarly summation of forces in y direction can be considered as mass into acceleration in y direction so the acceleration is now going to have two components x component as well as y component now these are all the simple terms the simplest law that we have newton's law of motion which we are going to use over here and based on this we have got some principle called as d'alembert's principle which says that summation of forces minus mass into acceleration of that body is equal to zero summation of forces that is sigma f minus m into a equal to zero is nothing but the d alembert's principle of course d alembert's principle we can implement it in x direction and we can say that sigma fx minus m into ax will be equal to zero similarly sigma forces in y direction minus m into ay is equal to zero once we understand this rate of change of velocity type of concept that is acceleration we can go further to discuss another concept in energy that is the potential energy the potential energy is nothing but mass into gravitational acceleration into the height now actually mg is nothing but the force which is the inertia force so mg is always acting in the downward direction and when the body is raised to height h we will say that the body has gained the potential energy which is equal to force into the distance traveled now the distance traveled is nothing but the height which we are assigning to that particular body which is h because that body is assumed to be at height 0 and then it is lifted up to height h so the work done will be the work done by the weight of that particular body and therefore work done in this case can be considered as mg into the distance traveled h in other words it is called as the potential energy